Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for attending this first webinar run by myself and CCM. The webinar should last 30 to 40 minutes, depends how we go. Um, there will be a Q&A available on your thing if you are tuning in, and 97 people actually are, so thank you very much for listening. The questions I will try and cover at the end. Most of this is not going to be my beautiful face on screen. Most of it's actually going to be a screen share with me. If you've watched other people do this, I'm sure it is entirely seamless when they do it. However, it probably isn't going to be when I do because this is my first one. Um, I'm going to start with trying to get the screen share up and then we can go from there. Although you will have seen some of this already. Um, here we go. So. COVID-19. Carter Collins and Meyer um, presentation. We've got a number of things to cover today, most of which are going to be the grants that are actually available to you. Grants people are confusing already. Grants are not loans. Grants are non-repayable things that the government are providing. Grants are taxable on the whole though, so please do bear that in mind as we go through. I believe this could be the complete roadmap to recession-proofing your business. Um, there is going to be tough times and there is a hedge, but there is some good news as we will start with. Start with good news for this. Uh, and I think some of this has to be put into perspective. I think one of the most interesting and telling things that are available to people in the UK, frightened right now, because people are, is actually the information that is coming out of China. In the province which this started in, in China, from start to finish, has been nine weeks. In the city of Wuhan, which is the absolute epicenter of everything, they're going to be opening up on the 8th of April. That'll be 11 weeks. When the government is turning around saying that this is likely to last for about 12 weeks, I am inclined to believe that based on the information which is seeing, being seen elsewhere. The um, other thing that I think will actually is very relevant to this particular situation, is all credible source of information are saying that testing is the future of how we will get under control of uh, CV19. Testing the situation, knowing who has had the, the, the illness, who has got the illness, and who is vulnerable to all the illness. Bear in mind, China didn't have most of these tests available. This is a new disease, and most of the technology that is currently being invented and put through is entirely new, so we are, or should be well in front of other countries simply because we are that much further down the line of developing the information and technology to allow us to detect and deal with this situation. The um, two, two particular good sources of information in regard to this are South Korea, which developed tests quite quickly and have, I believe, from all sources I see, tested almost everybody in the population and therefore has had one of the lowest death rates of anywhere ever. The other thing that is, is saying is British Medical Journal. There's a fantastic article put out by the British Medical Journal, which I've given a link to it on this, and these slides will be available, um, that demonstrates how testing could be so effective for us. Um, all sources of information do confirm the low mortality rates, although obviously for anybody that does pass, this is an individual tragedy. And for those of you who know um, the development history of CCM directly, we have had somebody that has been part of our firm in the past actually pass in the last 24 hours. They did have underlying ill health. Um, something else that is worth noting is how this is being recorded in different countries as well. Um, in both the UK and Italy, anybody who dies that has coronavirus in their system is recorded as dying of coronavirus. Whereas in Germany, they are recording only those people that have specifically died of it as dying from it. That creates a very different number of figures. In a similar vein, the World Health Organization has actually said that in the December 18, January 19 and February 19, 12,000 people in Western Europe died from flu. Apparently, in the same period this year, zero people have died from flu. 
think about that, that actually means I think there's a significant degree of recategorization going on. I do not mean I'm taking any of this lightly. Clearly, it is not. But I think there is some good information out there, and I do think this will pass, um, as is being said. So, having said, given the good news, here's what's available. Self-employed scheme. Self-employed scheme was launched last night. Um, the scheme itself gives 80% of earnings under £50,000 to the self-employed on an average basis over their last three tax returns. If their last three tax returns are not available, however many are available. Who are self-employed? Self-employed are those that have those words written on their tax return self-employed income. If you don't have those words self-employed income written on your tax return, you are not self-employed. This does not cover company directors. Company directors are something different. There is an argument that company directors have been overlooked in all the provisions. There's a number of things that need to be considered if you're taking that argument in terms of them. One of the things is company directors have not paid national insurance. If you have had 55,000 pounds of dividends in the last three years, you have saved 7,500 pounds of national insurance compared with the self-employed. The scheme at its maximum for the self-employed gives three months money up to 80% of £50,000. I can't do mental arithmetic, if those of you who uh, know me will attest, so I'm going to actually calculate that live. So £50,000, to it, the maximum to take home on of those, um, times that equals 0.8, 200 times. That's six. So the maximum you could get under this scheme is six thousand pounds against seven thousand five hundred pounds of savings. There is a, that is part of their reasoning. I understand if you are in dire straits at this moment and you are worrying where all money is coming from. That that is no um, salvation to you. It doesn't give you any form of comfort at this particular moment, but it does need to be bear in mind. And there are things that can be done, which we will talk about, albeit this may not feel like it's giving you as much as other people. Recently self-employed will need at least one year's tax returns. If you have only just gone self-employed, you are falling through this gap. Just gone self-employed is anyone that has not yet filed that tax return. Coronavirus job retention scheme. Furloughing. If you're like me, you've never heard that word until six o'clock last week. Until six o'clock last week, furlough was something I never even considered or knew what was. Apparently, it is a term used quite a lot in America. Um, it literally means to lay off. Under the furlough scheme, which a number of you will have already been starting to see, your employees, rather than being sacked as a direct result of coronavirus and the downturn in trade this has caused, are given the opportunity to go on a paid period of furlough. They remain on your payroll throughout this. You must pay them when their pay falls due and reclaim up to 80% of their normal pay from the government. You do not have to pay them more than the amount that you can reclaim. So if they would normally get £100 and you enter them on this scheme, they now get a minimum of 80, which will come back to you from the government. But please do note this, there is some confusion. A lot of people think the government are going to pay them. They're not. You must pay them and reclaim the money. Now the scheme doesn't open until the end of April, we are being told. We have no details yet for this, which means it is highly likely to be May before you actually see the refunds coming through. Now, if CCM prepare your payroll, we will undertake this for you. 
That is the reclaim and the calculations that are necessary. But you must contact us and say to us the names of the employees that you are furloughing together with details of when they went on furlough and how much you wish to pay them. If you wish to pay 100% of their earnings, you can do, but you will only get the 80% back. So please bear that in mind as well when you're making these decisions. If you don't think you, if you pay weekly, we are suggesting that you ask your employees to go on a monthly pay to make this easier for you to both administer and fund. If you are uh, thinking that you are unable to make the payment first, we would suggest you talk to your employees to ask them to pay to you, you pay them when you are refunded. So you would put your payroll through on the normal dates, say the 28th of April. We would then make the reclaim for you and when the money arrives back with you, you can pay it out. Now the furlough itself can't, has to be for a minimum of three weeks at a time. So if you are on weekly pay, you can't do this on a weekly basis, even when the scheme opens. You can only do it at three week intervals, which is again why we're suggesting that you ask your employees to go on four weekly, at least or monthly. It has to be an ask, it can't be an insistence. Like following itself has to be an ask. It can't be an insistence. This is an agreement outside of regular employment contracts. No employment contract, I, well, that's a, two, that's a very sweeping statement. Very few employment contracts are going to have this sort of thing in them because this is an entirely black swan event. No one ever saw this type of thing happening. So everything you do is by discussion and negotiation with your employees. The letter that, we, that I put out on my, week, on my daily emails, as they now are, has a template letter that I obtained from a barrister uh, called Daniel Barnett. You will notice it is an agreement. Please use these. Please put them on your letterhead. Please get them signed by both parties. Please give one copy to the employee and keep the other one safe. Yes, this is a dire emergency. And yes, in a number of my opinion pieces I'm putting out there, and I will happily say you do what is necessary to survive. But at the same time, try and cover your backside as much as you possibly can all the way through this because lawyers in a couple of years' time are likely to try and make their living from it. So please keep that in mind as you go. Now again, something else to remember. Well, no, one other point first. What's covered by the furlough is either 80% of their salaries we talked of, up to two and a half thousand pounds, but it is all employment costs. So that's the gross salary, the employer's national insurance, and the basic rate of auto-enrolled pension. So if they come, if all of that together comes in at less than two and a half thousand, you will get all of it together. If all of that together comes at more than two and a half thousand, the most you can get is two and a half thousand. Please also note again that for lowing, the government guidance is being very vague in this area. As company law stands, you cannot follow a single director company. A company has to have a live director on it at all times to undertake the fundamental duties of the, of the company. A company has to have a representative on it available to do things. And even practically, if you think about this, if the director is furloughed, they are not allowed, or anybody furloughed, is not allowed to do anything for the business. So if you furlough a solo director, they are not ever going to be able to tell themselves to come off the furlough without breaking company law. What this means is the government guidance is saying directors' wages and I'll come on to what that means in a minute, can be covered by furlough. That is only in the case of multi-director companies. I strongly suspect that anybody that tries to alter that right now is going to have an inquiry from HNRC somewhere down the line because it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Now, a multi-director company can furlough other directors in it, but somebody always has to remain on it. But it can only be 
for what has gone through the payroll in the three months up to, or an average of what's gone through the payroll in the three months up to the 28th of February 2020, which means in standard companies, the most tax efficient thing is and remains, despite the circumstances, to pay a basic salary of roughly 720, followed by director's dividends or shareholders' dividends. Dividends do not count in this case. So even if you can furlough a director that is on the payroll, it is 80% of the 720 that can be claimed. That's if it's available. On a case-by-case -case basis, we will be coming to you. Right now, please bear in mind, there is a lot of people, well, everybody in the country is desperately going, what can I claim, what can I claim? We are going to release a document during the course of next week that is a decision tree. It will be on a big piece of paper. You will answer questions and come to what's available to you. We will work through that with people. We will aim to work through with you on the telephone by ringing you and going through it. That will focus the work that needs to be done. Please don't panic rush us into trying to do this because nobody will get anywhere with it. Please also bear in mind that all of these schemes are only going to be live in the future months. It, you are not going to get any of this type of money in the next few weeks. So to allow us to work through the process methodically will put us all in a much better place to get as much as we possibly can, as fast as we can for people, as soon as the schemes open. Business rates and grant funding schemes. For a lot of small businesses, this is going to be one of the best things that you can do. There's a lot of detail about this, which I'm not going to be able to cover on this webinar, and I'm also not an expert in, and I don't know your individual premises. I would urge you to go on the website that gives this specifically. There is a link on these notes which will be available. There is a link on every one of the last emails that I've sent out to the appropriate page for this. Basically, it appears that commercial premises on the 11th of March 2020 with a rateable value of between 12 and 15,000 pounds will receive a grant of 10 grand. If you had that rateable value, it is likely that you actually ended up with business rates relief anyway and didn't pay anything. But it does mean if you are in a business premises where your name is on that rates bill and it is less than the parameters on here, you should be looking at this. We believe this is going to be run by local councils. And we believe this is going to come before for lowing schemes and before self-employed schemes and anything else. This, we believe, is going to be one of the quickest ways of getting money into your business. Now, there are exclusions as to what can claim this. For example, accountants can't. Lawyers can't. I'm sure that's a great relief to many people on this call. But please look at the individual things specifically. Retail, hospitality and leisure have extended grants available to them. If your rateable value was less than £51,000 and you fall in to retail, hospitality and leisure as defined by the official guidance, you should be looking at getting a grant of £25,000. Now, any information that's required to get the grants, we will help you with when we know and you know what it is that is going to be required. But right now, we don't know what you are going to need to fill out for the local authority to get this. So please do bear with us. And as we find out, you will too. Keep reading the emails. If you think you fall into this, that is, you have a commercial premises from which you work, for which you get a bill every year in the name of yourself or your business, but you hear nothing of this by the end of April, please email me directly and I will contact you on a one-to-one -one basis. At this moment, I have no further information on this. One final point on this is you probably will need a signed lease in order to be able to claim it. Tax and VAT. This is also a very quick cash flow win. Liability itself is not going away. You will end up owing 
the tax and the VAT in due course. But HMRC are not looking to collect this anytime soon. Indeed, we believe they're not going to look to collect this until next January. We also believe in, in collecting next January, we are going to have to do a lot of tax planning for you to make sure that we smooth out your income across a number of years. If you think most people's year ends on this call are finishing about now, and the last year has probably been okay, this coming year is not going to be anywhere as good. The tax return that falls due on the 31st of January 2020 is going to be based on the year that is just finishing now, i.e. the one that's not too bad. Which means it is possible that you could be having quite a decent sized tax bill in the 31st of January 2021, followed by a very low tax bill, January 2022. But you have just lived through a very bad time which means we are going to have to look to smooth with you your income across those years, legally and properly, using tax rules, to ensure that your tax bill is not bad at the worst possible time for you. We also believe that time to, well, right now, time to pay is a very, very easy to get from HMRC. We have rang up and got incredible deals on time to pays for people. Almost all taxes are currently not being collected. We will believe that time to pays on tax deals will still be soft to get for quite a while later. We also believe that all tax compliance will have a great excuse for quite a while if it's late. One of the tax compliances that's going to be very important though is if you are in that self-employed group and haven't filed your tax return, which I don't think there's anybody on this particular call in that position, we are going to have to file it quickly. I will check through the designate list of this afterwards, the 97 that are on it, and I will give, I'll give specific guidance if anybody falls into that. I don't think anybody does. Now, why this is good, if you have a VAT bill falling due, or a corporation tax bill falling due, or any taxes falling due right now that you have accumulated money to pay, you can hold on to that money. So if your VAT was 10 grand and was due to be paid on the 7th of April, you don't need to pay it on the 7th of April. That means you can hold on to this money now. That is a very quick, free, interest-free, loan that you can get with no applications or no anything. You've got it automatically. So please do bear that in mind. If you want to take advantage of that, you need to cancel your direct debits to HMRC. They are on an automated system and will just work. You do need to file your VAT, PAYE, CT, all the returns need to be filed to get the interest-free automatic deferments on all of these. Indeed, we believe throughout all of this, those that have their compliance up to date are going to be looked at the most favorably. Even in last night's announcements, a lot of emphasis was put by Richie Sunak on the future of what's coming. The future of what's coming in tax, once we've got through the pandemic, is going to be more tax. Therefore, what they want to do is they're going to be soft now on people that are registered, declaring, filing, everything else, so that in the future, there's going to be more tax. You have to weigh your individual circumstances as to whether you want to get the relief now for all of this, or whatever may come later. Coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. I have been very cynical on my emails about this. The pressure that I and others have shouted, or the, the, the complaints that I and many others have shouted out about this, has caused a certain amount of softening. Most of the high street banks are now not, we believe, asking for PGs, personal guarantees, up to £250,000. If you qualify for these loans, these are good deals from the high street. There's a number of providers 
that are offering these or offering things that they are calling similar names that are horrific. There's one provider that we have seen this week that somebody who's considered that is charging 30% interest a year when the 12 month period ends. Now the first 12 months of these loans are interest free to you. They are not interest free, the government is paying the interest. After 12 months, interest must be paid. The maximum term of these loans is six years. We're hearing from our own bank, other, another bank we have spoken to, and finance brokers that we know, that the best source or chance of you getting one of these is to go to your existing bank. The banks are being inundated with requests for these, which means that they are looking to deal with the customers they know first because it's easier. It is strongly suggested as well that you package this up in a way that makes it easy for your bank to read. Now, whilst we are involved in packing, helping package it, we don't routinely raise finance. It's not something that is a everyday thing for us, which means at this time, to speed this up, we suggest you use finance brokers. We suggest one person that we have worked with over a number of years. We don't make any money from that. He may or may not cost. That is for a discussion for you individually. He indicated to Paul, indicated to me that if somebody was applying for £200,000, he would look to charge them about £250 if the loan was successful. That's what he told me. You need to have that discussion separately. His contact details are on the emails we sent. But what you are using them for is to make this loan in a package and a format that is as easy for your own bank to read as possible to give you the best chance of getting this through as possible. Um, alternatives to C, well, other things, the C-bills. I've discussed in my emails how C-bills work in terms of the guarantee that is available. As I say, PGs are being relaxed. I haven't checked this week, but up until this week, insurance used to be available for these type of things. I will check in the coming week whether if you enter one of these, you could go and buy an insurance policy to cover any liability you may have. Historically, insurance has been about 1% of the loan value. I don't know whether the market is still existing for that or not. It tends to be on, on a week by week basis. Insurance policies come from Lloyds of London. Like all insurance policies, I'm sure they've got loads of weasel factors in there, but I'd rather have one myself than not. This is something you're interested in. I would urge you to ring Paul first. There's no commitment in that at all. He's not gonna charge you for a phone call. Go a bit further down the line, then start thinking of approaching your bank, then come to us at this stage. We are not directly going to be able to get this for you, but indirectly through providing information, we will. Now, all information that is requested in the next couple of months, because this is gonna go on for a couple of months, we're gonna make available through our portal. It's the same portal that you use for your tax returns and everything else. We can't just email it, GDPR stops us doing that. It has to be provided that way. So please keep it on top of that. There are alternatives to traditional bank lending. I was on a Zoom conference with the Institute of Directors. Here's some ideas, I've talked about Paul Williams. Try funding options, Google it, or follow this link when I send around the slides. They will allow you to search for some of the best funding opportunities. Peer-to-peer -peer lenders or other sources, uh, people like Funding Circle. Also look at considering Cedars, which is a website. I have my own reservations on some of these being provided at this time. I think a lot of these people will ask you for a lot of information and say, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Can I have some more information? Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Can I have some more information? on and on and on, but never actually get anywhere and you won't see money. So please, even if you qualify for this stuff, don't be looking to hang your entire business on this. So a couple of things about just working from home before we get back onto reliefs for things. Probably should have put this slide after actually. Um, but if you are working from home, I know a lot of people are including a lot of my own team. Try and set a schedule for your day. Give some thought to it, some structure. It's very easy to sustain your pajamas and sit there all day long. Um, 
I know at times when I've worked at home, ironically, I'm working more in the office than ever before, although most of the team are not here. Um, I know that it's very easy to get up, sit in my pajamas, not eat properly, don't have breakfast, don't move from the desk, and 12 hours later, shuffle back to bed. It's one of the worst things you could do if you're on self-isolation or if you're at home and trying to work. Make sure you move around, have a designated space to work, a decent chair, stay connected uh, to things, read emails, follow stuff, talk to people. This Zoom is a great system. I have had a massive learning curve this week picking it up. As, as you know, this is my very first webinar. It's ideal for hosting meetings on. I've done a dozen meetings this week on it. It works really, really well. This, you can get a basic account for free. If you want to run webinars yourself, there is a cost to Zoom. Um, but as you can see for the user, hopefully it works out quite well for you. Um, urge you, say, make sure you have regular breaks, take away get coffee, et cetera. There's some great memes around the internet on this kind of stuff as well about installing water coolers in your bathroom and things like that. Back to the release, as I say, I probably should pop this the other way around. Things everybody should be doing, whatever they do, because this, this is about getting you through. It's about surviving and getting through difficult times. All formal financial institutions for both personal and business have been instructed that they should be giving three months holidays on request from people because of loss of incomes or downturn in incomes during coronavirus 19. You need to use those words when you make the call. So for your own mortgage, if you have a downturn in income, you need to telephone your mortgage provider and say to them, due to CV19, I am suffering a downturn in income and I need a three month holiday. Different banks are organizing the holidays in different ways. Some are extending the terms of the mortgage. So if you had a 20 year mortgage, you now have a 20 year and three months. Some are taking the three months and spreading it over one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years. Depends on the individual bank. You must, you have to telephone them and ask for that. The banks have been instructed, they must give it to you. The same applies with business debt and formal financial institutions. If you've got a bank loan currently, Bear in mind, if you've got a bank loan currently and you're asking for a holiday, but then applying for another loan, it's going to look bad. But if you've got a bank loan, if you've got car finance, credit card finance, you can ask for this. Residential tenants can also have this protection. You can ask your landlord for a three-month holiday. You still owe the rent, but you can ask for it, and a residential landlord cannot evict you during this time scale. The more that you can offer that residential landlord, the more likely it is that they will support you. So if you can pay something towards the rate, if you can pay weekly or something, it's more likely they'll support you. But they cannot evict you. They cannot give you, they cannot throw you out. They themselves, if you are a landlord, are getting the holiday that individual mortgage providers are getting. So they can ring up their bank and ask for three month holiday as well. The banks have been, by the way, if you're asking for holidays, all the banks and regulated financial institutions have been told that they cannot mark an adverse on your credit file. Some of these messages I know have not made their way yet through to the call centers, which is why you may have to start doing, if you've had a knockback already on this, you may well have to start doing it next week rather than this week. Ring again, ring again, ring again until you are told the right thing. If you've got an expensive car right now on a lease and you're halfway through the lease, you can send it back. If you're nearly halfway through, you can bring it to halfway through and send it back. You still, you may have to get alternative arrangements on a car, but I know of clients who've gone out and got very expensive cars because they were doing good. They've now had a massive downturn in income. Now I know none of this is nice, I know this is horrible. I know you don't want to do this, but this is survival. And at the minute, this is some of the best stuff that's around to get people time to get out the other end. Bearing in mind, China took nine weeks. So if you got 12, you could be starting to see out the other end. And I honestly think the courts are closed, by the way, for the next 12 weeks, and so no one can start legal proceedings in these periods. And if you rock up in court in six months' time because someone's being a bit of an arse to try and get money out of you, after this, 
uh, on a regulated financial product that has been told to give you time, I think you've got a very strong case to just stand there and go, COVID-19 judge. Universal credits. I've given a website on here, there is the link, that should be able to help you run through as to what is and isn't available. I know very, very little about universal credits. I stopped following it when we moved from working tax credits. I know the headline announcements that have been made that they have removed the income floor that was in place to it, which prevented all people on this call getting them previously. It is worth going to entitled2.co.uk and running your circumstances through. For universal credits, if you are a director in a company, you are treated as self-employed. I know that contradicts every other scheme, but that's the way it works for universal credits. You are treated as self-employed. Run it through, see what's there. The system, as I, as I see on the news, is massively overloaded, but be aware of that. It is an option. R&D tax credits are also an option. We've started talking about these. If your business does research and development, and go to my website and see what that means, because it's not men in white coats, you can get substantial tax refunds for this quickly. We were just about to start kicking into doing these to people to get money back into the business. If you have spent, say, 10 grand, I'm gonna need my calculator again, developing a product in the last year, you can physically get back in cash, just give me a moment, 3,350 pounds. So if you spend 10 grand on developing a product, you can physically get back 3,350 pounds fairly quickly. We're talking a couple of weeks, well, four weeks. The costs that are included in that are the direct materials of the product, the labor costs of the or service, the direct materials, of the product or service, the labor cost of the direct materials or service, and any software costs incurred in the production development of this product or service. Finally, as I said earlier, we're gonna produce a planner on a piece of paper, which we will email out and work through. We will, we will work through client by client going, yes, asking you questions to which the answers are yes no, or no, to come up with, individual circumstances. Please, please, I'm trying to answer every bit of email I can get, but I don't know every individual circumstances. And if you're asking me, can I get, what can I get? I can't answer it properly at this point. I need to do this methodically. A great analogy I heard during the week is, um, was done in a school recently. A teacher filled a corridor with balloons and on the balloons were written the names of the kids in the class. She told all the kids, you've got two minutes to go out into the corridor and find your balloon. Off you go. After two minutes, one child had found their balloon. So she reset it, called them back in and said, what I want you to do this time is everybody go out. In two minutes, get any balloon and give it to the person whose name is on it. And in two minutes, every single child got their balloon. What I'm trying to say is if you let us help you systematically and methodically through this, we will get you everything that you can get coming to you. But please remember, other than things like universal credits, which is you, all the other stuff isn't going to open until April, May time. Well, May, June, before you actually see any money. A final thought for you before I wrap up the go into questions is, we are a business ourselves. I know it is horrible and tough for you, but for us to help you, I need you to keep your, us as the one of the very last um, bills and direct debits that you cancel. I'm sorry to be mercenary about this, but I need to keep my team here. We are going through this. We are asking for our landlord for deferrals and anything else. But please bear in mind, if you stop paying us, we are going to, not be able to support you in the same way we could if you were. If you've got specific individual circumstances of, of dire straits, email me specifically and I'll come back to you and we'll deal with it on a one-to-one -one basis. Finally, an uplifting quote from my favorite writer, 
Albert Camus, a French writer from the early 20th century who was a prominent figure in the French resistance during World War II. In the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer, and that made me happy, for it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me there's something stronger, something better, pushing right back. I am going to try and come out of this now and move on to questions um, for those that have asked them. Q and A's, here we go. Uh, I've got a question from David. Hi, it refers to directors on the government website with a link saying you can claim it under the job retention scheme. The link does not give uh, does not specifically take the information for directors. I have actually covered this, David. The scheme only really covers um, multiple company, multiple companies with multiple directors, not single directors. And it only covers that part which was on PAYE, not the part that was on dividends. Let's see if we've got else. Can you defer PAYE or is it just VAT? For Medina. Yes, you can defer PAYE. That is automatic at this point for the next three months. Uh, I think that looks like the end of questions. Hopefully that's been clear and useful for everybody. Oh, one more. Barry, should I still submit my VAT return at the end of the month? Yes, all compliance has to be submitted to get the deferrals interest-free, penalty-free. If you don't submit this stuff, you will end up paying interest and penalties. So yes, all tax returns, VAT returns, everything has to be filed. Right, anybody else got any other questions? Uh, a couple more. Hillary. Can I say thank you for the webinar? Thank you very much. Thank you. That's really kind of you. Robert, will, we, will CCM work out what employees are entitled to under the 80%? Yes, we will. What we need you to do if you're asking for your employees to be furloughed is email payroll at uk-ccm.com. That's the usual payroll address. Say who is being furloughed, when they were put on furlough, and we'll do the rest of it for you, including the refund. Some more questions coming through. I'll keep these, happy to keep these going. There is a petition on change. Uh, David, there is a petition on change.gov regarding small companies. I want director, please announce and ask people to whom yet seek it out. Right, petition on change.com to change the rules with regard to small company directors. 100% support for this, David, completely. Please go to change.com and sign this. One of the troubles has been through this, we're getting into smaller and smaller numbers. At the beginning, it was the entirety of the working population, 25 million people. They announced support for workers that took it to 5 million people. They announced support last night for self-employed and it's taken it to a million people. There's a million people in the UK directly affected by small company things. Um, David, if you have a link for the um, petition, could you please post it on one of the questions? I've been asked for it and I will read it out to everybody in a second. I'll also then follow it up on one of my emails. Please, please, please sign this petition. I will, I'll get everybody in CCM to do it. The trouble is the million people don't have the voice of the others. I believe this is unintended from the government. I believe it's unintended. I believe they're trying, they just haven't realized it. They're thinking, they're making this up on the hoof and are thinking about it as they go along. If we can, um, we will, if we can do it for you, we will get it. If we can do it together and shout about it, we will. I am certainly on every forum that exists for this stuff. I am battling like, I was gonna swear on webinars and I'm trying not to, because if those that know me in person know I swear a lot, I'm trying not to do it on the webinar. Uh, I, will, I am battling like hell for everybody, so please do sign up to that stuff. Um, can we ask for help even if you don't do our payroll? Move your payroll to us, we'd be delighted to help you. The honest answer is yes, we will anyway through this time, but please do something. Uh, Tom, no, I can't lend you a tenner. Thanks very much. Robert, thank you. 
as well. Other guys, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Tax relief on R&D. Um, will this still apply if, it ha if this is passed? Yes, it will. Tax relief will still apply if this is passed. The R&D tax scheme is a brilliant tax scheme. Um, it's going to be around for ages. Rateable value is, is less than £12,000. Do I still qualify? Stephen, I'm, I'd have to go back and check specifically. I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head. Please do read the links. I will come back to you specifically on those once we start working through people. I can't remember is the honest answer. Blimey, D David, thank you for putting up the change.com. I'm going to have to share that one because it's a really weird email address. I'll share it with everybody on an email afterwards to sign this. Um, Hillary's posted that as well. That's actually, again, I'll have to share that because it's, um, it's, it's a long, complicated email address. Um, can the let furlough letter be sent by email? Yes, but have the discussion in person. Um, even the, the, when I say in person, in person can be a telephone call, it can be um, a, a webinar like this, it can be, well, I wouldn't do a webinar, I'd do a, 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 a meeting as opposed to a webinar. I'd have a discussion. Don't please just send a letter. I suspect that contravenes all sorts of, of HR stuff. Do it in person, be nice about it when you do it. Most people's employees are really understanding at this time. Um, Hillary, you can do a Google search, change.org small company petition. That brings up the link. Great advice, thank you for everybody listening. Change.org small company petition. Um, we have a small boat hire collects. We have a small boat hire business. We pay mooring fees to the marina. We do not have business premises where we pay rates. However, all our bookings have now been cancelled, so we've no income. What can we claim? Uh, collect. I'm going to have to come back to you as we start working through it. My analogy about the balloons um, applies to your one. It's getting very specific. That sorry, I can't do it on this particular thing. Um, can they accept it by email? Is that the, Jackie, can they accept it by email? Is that, if that's the follow letter, yes, but please do say it in person, have a chat with them. Stephen, thank you very much for your comments. I'm glad it's been helpful. Anybody for any more? Right, guys, I think that is it. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you so much. I hope it has been useful. I wish everybody luck through this. Please do stay in touch with us. As I say, I honestly, honestly believe we will all get through this. I honestly think the government's 12-week thing is not going to be too far off. I think it could be less than that. Look at China. Look what's happened there. Look through countries that have already experienced this, that already started to come out the other side, and they knew nothing about how to manage it, whereas we now do. For what it's worth, I hope everyone went out and applauded the NHS last night. I'd like to do a shout-out for my own wife who is an absolute hero through this. Sorry, I'm well got there. She's on a respiratory ward. She's a nurse at Withenshaw Hospital. She's got all sorts of chaos going on at the minute. Um, I, she's not watching, I know that, but my wife, Steph, is being absolutely fecking amazing through all of this, for people. So shout out to the NHS and everybody else that's looking after them. Well done. I think I've had one more question before I go. Um, no, just a comment. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Stay in touch. We will be in touch with you as soon as I work out the chart of how we get there. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.